And after 36 years of waiting, Argentina have finally became world champions yet again. In this video, I'm going to be going over their journey of how they became world champions in 2022 edition of the World Cup with a bunch of facts and stuff along the way. So let's get into it without further ado, because this is going to be a long one. To get into the games, what we're going to do is go over the group that Argentina were drawn into. And that group was with Poland, Mexico, and Saudi Arabia, which uh, Argentina were thought to have an easy group top top the group with ease, just get all nine points, uh, but it wasn't as easy as we're about to go over. And before actually we go into this, I'm going to explain how the point system and uh, groups work and everything. So basically, you there's 32 teams in the tournament, and you get drafted into eight groups of four, and each win you get is worth three points, each tie you get is worth one point, and each loss that you get is worth zero points. And basically, they play a game against each person in the group once, and however many points you get, based off whether you win, tie, or lose, they add that up, and if you're tied on points, then they go to goals that you scored versus goals scored against you, and then they have like tiebreakers and all that. So uh, now we're going to get into the first game, actually. So Argentina, we're going into this match against Saudi Arabia as heavy favorites. Like, it was, like, overwhelming. Nobody thought Saudi was going to win. Probably even some Saudi Arabians didn't think they were going to win, as that's just how good of a team Argentina was. But Saudi, uh, the game didn't obviously go this way. Uh, in the beginning of the game, around the 10th minute, Messi scores a penalty to take the lead, uh, as things should be going. You know, everything's going well. But then uh, the Argentine scoring stops. In the second half, the Saudis just get two goals out of nowhere. Uh, past Emiliano Martinez to get the win. Pe and people, rightly so, start doubting Argentina with news titles from Fox Sports and CNN and all that uh, along the lines of Ar Argentina's World Cup hopes over after a loss to Saudi Arabia. And all those titles start circulating and there's heavily, there's a bunch of doubts around this team for being heavy favorites but then losing to a very, very bad team, for uh, lack of a better word. But anyway, Scaloni's men uh, stay strong and keep their head up, and then they move on to a must-win game against Mexico uh, as a loss or a tie against Mexico would uh, basically knock them out. A loss would definitely knock them out, and a tie would pretty much knock them out, but it isn't confirmed yet. Second game against Mexico. The game is tied 0-0, which is worrying many Argentine fans as, as uh, if this trend continues, then they will pretty much be eliminated from the World Cup. At, but uh, and now that the tournament's over, we know this isn't the case. As in the 64th minute, Messi scores an outside-the-box uh, goal against uh, Ochoa, Mexico's uh, keeper, to lift Argentina uh, hearts everywhere. This was a very good goal as well, just to take the lead. And it, it was just a huge stepping stone for Argentina as this basically was one of their things that propelled them out of this group to take them to win this uh, World Cup. And then basically to seal the deal for uh, Argentina, Enzo Fernandez uh, gets a goal in the 87th minute to get the final score of 2-0. Group C, Argentina need a win versus Poland uh, as a loss or tie in a Saudi Arabian win would knock them out of the tournament. Uh, and at this point in the tournament, um, Poland's top of the group Argentina second in the group, Saudi Arabia is third, and then Mexico is in uh, dead last. So this was a very uh, surprising turnout, and as I said, Argentina need a win as anything else would officially knock them out of the tournament. Uh, they would go on to win this game 2-0, though, with goals from McAllister and Julian Alvarez, who had a very good tournament this year, pretty breakout thing, so he could be getting a huge move in the summer. Um... And with Poland going through second, barely by having scored one more goal than uh, Mexico. So Saudi Arabia and Mexico are out, while Argentina tops the group and Poland barely goes through. Argentina's round of 16 game against Australia, where once again they were heavy favorites, just like in the Saudi Arabia game. But I don't think that they let the World either World Cup jitters or just purely just being too confident in this tournament gets them this time as they let it get to them in the Saudi Arabia game. They got a pretty comfortable 2 nothing lead, uh, but then in Australia... Uh, then Australia got a comeback goal through uh, Fernandez's own goal, but then they just couldn't make anything of it as their defense stopped everything. And Emiliano, Emiliano Martinez, when the uh, Aussies occasionally got through, was there to block it. The Argentina's uh, quarterfinals game against the Netherlands. This was one of their tougher games in this tournament, and it was a very entertaining one to watch. I've noticed that a lot of their tougher games that matter have de definitely been the uh, more entertaining ones. Again, Argentina got off to a 2 nothing lead, but then uh, the Netherlands subbed on Wout Weghurst. And 
you may be asking, who is this dude? Who is he? Who does he play for? Who is he? Does he does he even play outside of professional, like, uh, international leagues? And uh, he definitely made his name known by scoring in the 83rd minute and then in the 90th plus 11 on uh, the Netherlands' final chance. They had a free kick where I forget who took it, but they whoever it was slotted a beautiful through ball to uh, Veghurst, and then he just got he got the goal in to send the game into extra time. Uh, the ga- uh, after the period of extra time, which was very, very just kind of boring and nothing really happened, Argentina went on to win on penalties, uh, scoring four, making the final score for penalties 4-3, sending Argentina through to their semifinal game. On to their semifinal game, which everyone thought would be a hard one as they're versing Croatia uh, 2018 finalist, who have been putting up a very good fight this tournament as well. Uh, they got through to the semifinals and were looking to get to the final back-to-back. Um, but Argentina didn't let them get uh, the better of them as they got a comfortable 3 uh, nothing win over Croatia with Argentina's attack just tearing Croatia's defense to shred, especially being uh, Messi taking on Vardiol and basically just... Uh, <laughs> knocking down his uh, market value so much, but still good defender. But anyway, their attack just teared them to shreds. And then uh, whenever Croatia got the ball in the uh, counterattack, uh, Argentina's defense was there just to block and be the brick wall that it was, sending them through to their first final since 2014. Sets up possibly the greatest World Cup final ever played in FIFA's history between France, 2018's previous winner, and Argentina. This was a huge game, not just because big teams and it's the World Cup final, but also just because of the history behind it. Argentina have, obviously, their star man Messi, and he has never won a World Cup, and it was rumored to be his final uh, year playing for the national team. So this was basically his last chance. And now France, as I said earlier, were the previous champions. So they're looking to go back-to-back for the first time since Brazil did in 1958, I believe. Um, And Argentina are trying to get their first World Cup win since uh, 1986, and then also getting Messi's first World Cup, basically, to cross everything off the list. And like I said, this was possibly the greatest final ever. It was just so high-scoring back and forth. Now let's get into it without further ado. The game commences. In the 23rd minute, Argentina win a penalty, which Messi uh, coolly converts to take a 1-0 lead. And then uh, in the 36th minute, 13 minutes later, Di Maria uh, then gets a uh, second goal assisted by McAllister, which forces France to sub off Giroud, their highest goal scorer, and Dembele, which was a huge move, making first half subs in the World Cup final, but eventually it paid off, as we'll get into later. Then, in the 80th minute, just as everyone thinks the game is about to be over and Argentina are about to get their trophy, everyone's t- uh, getting their tears just ready, prepared for what's about to happen with Messi. And then, France wins a penalty, which Mbappe converts, leaving the game still up for grabs. They get back into it, and then not even two minutes later, Turum uh, sends Mbappe a lofted ball, which Mbappe volleys into the back of the net, sending the game into extra time just as everyone thought it was about to end and the game was going to be over. So, this game, already just 90 minutes past, is going to be just going back and forth already, ju- and it's going to be, ha- like, stakes are going to be high, everything. Then, in the second, or in the first half of uh, extra time, Messi then scores off of a Latoro Martinez rebound in the 107th minute, which France claims is offside, or there's a handball or something. They're trying to get nothing out of the goal. They're trying to say it doesn't count just so they they can cool down a bit, but the ref goes to check over the monitor and determines that it is not, which makes it a goal, making the score 3-2. Then, France wins another penalty off a Molina handball, which Mbappe also converts. 3-3, and then, in the 123rd minute, Francis Colomwani has a chance to win the game. He's breaking away from the Argentine defenders. Emiliano Martinez is out of the box. All he has to do is shoot and score their next World Cup after previously winning it, but Martinez sticks out of foot and saves it, sending the game into penalties. Everyone is on their feet, prepared for what this game has to offer still. Just as the nerves are heightening, Mbappe and Messi convert their first penalties, making the score overall 1-1 on pens. But then Komen's shot gets sent wide, and Chouameni's gets saved, which leaves it down to Molina, who previously left up the penalty, which basically sent the game into penalties. 
to us to take the winning penalty to get Argentina their first World Cup victory since 1986 when Diego Maradona, their star boy then, previously won it for them. He steps up to go take the penalty, and he converts it, winning their first World Cup since 1986. He's embraced everything happens. Messi's crying tears of joy as this is his World Cup. He's won it. The trophy celebrations are done. He goes up to lift it, and history is made. The GOAT debate is basically just non-existent anymore. Messi's won everything there is to be imaginable, and it's basically just a Hollywood ending. He's won it, and it, and then also after the game, he confirms that uh, this he's not going to be done with the national team. So uh, hopefully he'll be in for the 2026 World Cup in the U.S., and if I somehow get tickets to that, uh, I'll definitely try and record something, but... Whatever, this was a huge World Cup for Argentina, getting their first World Cup since 1986 with Diego Maradona, now 36 years later with Lionel Messi, arguably, or not arguably anymore even, just the GOAT until Mbappe eventually overtakes him uh, by the the time he's uh, 27. But anyway, that's the end of the video. Hope you guys enjoyed, I guess. But this video took a while to record. I probably started recording today around like 3 or something, and now I'm just getting done at like... Six, uh, so hopefully you guys leave a like, subscribe, just do anything, share it, I don't care. Just get it out to people somehow. But, uh, anyway, see you guys, uh, without further ado. And also, Merry Christmas. It's Christmas time. Yay. Presents. Santa. Goodbye.